Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode in the Invest for Tomorrow with K. 2022 is here and now we have to really start thinking through on how we are going to invest our money in this year. 2022 will be defined by many macroeconomic factors. So for example, number one would be the Fed starting to taper. The interest rates are going to increase. We will still have the COVID-19 variants, which I really hope and praying that we will see the light at the end of the tunnel at some point in time this year. Another factor is that the semiconductor industry, the supply chain issues might be seeing some respite. Things might start improving down from third, fourth quarter onwards. And lastly, we cannot ignore the geopolitical issues between China and US and the rest of the world. So against that backdrop, how does 2022 look from an investing standpoint? So first and foremost, there are few sectors that analysts are focusing on. Number one is energy sector. Number two is the financial sector. And number three is the healthcare sector, along with the technology sector, which includes the likes of the FANG group. So these are the direction which the analysts are predicting the stock market will move or will have the maximum gains in these sectors. Today's episode, we are going to take a look at one of these sectors and one of that ETF which covers that sector and that is going to be the financial sector. Now the reason I'm choosing that sector is because once the Fed tightens its policy, the sector that is going to gain the most is going to be the financial sector. And ETFs like XLF, which is one of the most popular ETFs in the financial sector industry, are set to gain the most. So the way we will structure this video is we'll go through the overview of that ETF, we'll look at the different holdings of the ETFs, we'll look at the performance of those ETF, and lastly, I'll give you my thoughts on what am I going to do with this ETF moving forward in 2022. And if you find any value out of today's episode, don't forget to hit that like. So without further ado, let's dive in. Before we jump into reviewing the XLF ETF, there are two main reasons that you should focus on. Number one is the central bank plans to buy $60 billion per month of bonds in combined treasuries and agency mortgage securities starting in January, which is going to be this month at the time of the recording. The second most important point is that the central bank has raised its inflation outlook for 2021 and 2022. It expects inflation to rise to 5.3% in 2021, which is up from the previous forecast of 42 and 2.6 in 2022, up from 2.2. With that said, in high inflationary period and high interest rate periods, the financial sectors generally tends to do good. So XLF is from State Street Corporation. It is a financial sector specific ETF and it is one of the most popular ETFs out there. The NAV value is $39.53 as of January 3rd, 2022. The expense ratio is about 0.12, which is pretty low as compared to most of these other ETFs because it is also passively managed as opposed to actively managed. The key features of this ETF are, this is the financial sector, fund seeks to provide investment results that before expenses correspond generally to the price and yield performance of the financial select sector index. The index seeks to provide an effective representation of the financial sector of the S&P 500. They seek to provide precise exposure to companies in the diversified financial services, insurance, banks, capital markets, mortgage, and real estate investment trusts like REITs, consumer finance, and thrifts and mortgage finance industries. So as you can see, it's a pretty has a pretty wide exposure from a financial sector standpoint. And it allows investors to take strategic or tactical positions at a more targeted level than a traditional style based investing. So looking at some of the fund information, this fund has been in existence since 1998. So it is a pretty old fund. There are options available as well. The administrative is the State Street Global Advisor Funds Management. So as of January 3rd, the fund characteristics, the EPS growth for the estimated three to five years has been about 16.4%. The number of holdings is about 67. The price to book ratio is 1.7, which is pretty low. The price to earning is 13.72. So this data is from November 30th. Right now in one year, they have 
provided about 38.60 return. In three years, they have provided 14.45, five years, 13.23, and 10 years, 15.98. And since inception, this has provided 5.37 return. Now let's get into the top 10 holdings of the fund versus the ETF. So in this ETF, the Berkshire Hathaway is about 12.61 weightage. JP Morgan Chase is 10.94, Bank of America is 7.61, Wells Fargo is 4.63, Morgan Stanley is 3.29, Goldman Sachs is 3.07, BlackRock 2.98, Charles Schwab 2.95, Citigroup is 2.87, and S&P Global INC is 2.54. One interesting factor about this ETF is that the top 10 holdings constitute about 53.87%. Moving on to the industry allocation, you will have exposure to banks, about 37%, insurance 16.84, capital markets 27.58, diversified financial services 12.61, and consumer finance 5.25. And this is the graph of how XLF has been performing since 1998. It opened at about 15.7 and now it's trading around $40.57 at the time of this closing. The last five years, we did see this big dip around the 2020 March area. This is where the start of the pandemic happened. And but since then, this ETF has slowly and steadily climbed up to a higher status. And in the one year time frame, this stock has returned about 38 point. 8-9% which is higher than your S&P 500 which is higher than your Nasdaq so it has had a very good performance and they also expect to have a similar performance for this year as well. So what are my thoughts on this ETF? Well, first of all, this ETF consists of a lot of quality companies and this ETF is a very well-known ETF in the financial sector space. And if you believe that the financial sector is set to gain in 2022, this ETF most likely is going to outperform the market again as they did in this year. So if you do not have any sector specific exposure in your portfolio, financial sector might be one that you might want to consider. As a full disclaimer, I would be adding XLF into my portfolio, but to know which portfolio I'm going to add, you will have to wait for the next episode. So if you got any value out of today's content, don't forget to hit the like, click on subscribe and ring the bell notification. I will see you next time, Investor Family, but don't forget to invest for tomorrow.